quote a good friend of mine who's a, a member of Knesset um, for the Zion, from the Zionist Union named Merav Michaeli, who is one of the most outspoken uh, Israeli feminists. Um, and her inaugural speech into the Knesset um, in, in 2013, she talked about how her feminism, first of all, she talked about how her grandfather, a founder of the State of Israel and a man who um, was Jewish and also uh, saved many, many Jews during the Holocaust and then came to Israel after that. Um, she used his story to transition away from our own victimhood. She said, um, growth can't come out of victimhood. Growth can only come from a place of strength. And she talked about the strength that it would take for us in Israel um, to not think of ourselves as victims, but to look around us and say, I'm only safe if I'm not being targeted, but also if nobody's being targeted. And that really stuck with me because also as a grandchild of Holocaust survivors, and uh, my dad was born in the ghetto, um, that, that transition is something that I think is happening in our generation. And so, you know, I agree with you that there's some sort of victimhood discourse in the intersectionality. Um, I wouldn't even call intersectionality a movement. I would call it a sort of analysis. And I think there is some sort of comparison of trauma, some comparison of, of victimhood. That's the part that I really hate about it. The part that I uh, relate to about it is this feeling that our, our liberation is tied up with one another, that if I'm standing up for my rights as a woman, I'm standing up for the rights of all women everywhere. For me, that includes Palestinian women. It does, and I'm looking at all the challenges that face Jewish women. I'm looking at all the challenges that face Palestinian women and women around the world and doing my best to break through those barriers. And you can't do that if you're denying a big part of what those challenges are. And so, you know, for me it's about listening to how women all over describe their own challenges. If you speak to Palestinian women, as I have done for many years in my career and in my personal life, they will talk about all kinds of things, like the things that you were mentioning, um, from their own society, and also they will talk about the occupation. We have to be able to acknowledge that those pieces are impacting Palestinian women, and for me that's enough of a reason to stand up for them. I don't think there's anything about actually, certainly in in the modern mainstream circle of the way, and I should say the, the modern conceptions of feminism, so that's maybe not a mainstream circle, that denies Palestinian statehood as part of its Zionism. I run almost entirely in left-leaning circles. I'm in New York City and work in media and I'm under 30. That's all <laughs> I'm around all the time. It is never an issue of denying Palestinian statehood. What comes up a lot more is um, questioning Jewish statehood. And look, uh, to your point about Linda Sarsour being criticized, I don't know if someone was invited to come up and say, like, I'm a Zionist and an American and a feminist. I would have loved to have seen that voice, and I would have been very curious to see what the response would have been online or what have you. And I certainly think that being a feminist can be taking into account the empowerment and the protection of women all over the world. But I do find it disconcerting if someone is saying they're using feminism to not just be critical of Israel, but to say that Israel is this colonizer oppressing force. I want to hear them talking as loudly about the domestic violence, about the lack of pro-choice options, about the honor killings in the Palestinian territories. If they're just talking about Israel's fault in this, that's when I'm getting a little fishy about what their true intentions are.